Yo guys, it's Ricky. Welcome to Rocket Vlog episode 19. Today I'm going to answer a bunch of questions from Facebook. Uh, I figured I'd do it in bed because, well, this is my tour bus and this is my bed because I figured if it was good enough for John Lennon, it would be good enough for me. Although he wouldn't go to bed with a bear, I don't think. I go to bed with a bear, why not? <laughs> bear necessities. <laughs> the simple bear necessities. Um, no, I'm not making fun of John Lennon or Yoko Ono. Actually, I think what they did in 1969 was probably one of the coolest press conferences in complete frickin' history. All we are this is the best room in the house for me to do a vlog because otherwise I'm sitting on the edge of the bed and I'd just rather lay in bed. Isn't that right? This is Bonnie the Bear. We didn't write in the studio. We, uh, we wrote in a rehearsal hall the way Poison always does. We set up like a garage band. We rehearse. And then we did pre-production with Tom Werman, and then we went in the studio. We were scared, actually. We went into the studio really, really nervous, and we came out really, really confident. But I think the funniest thing was that when it would just get tense, Tom Werman would say, okay, we're going to take a break, we're going to go outside of the basketball court, and we're going to play horse. And then most of the time, he owned us. <laughs> So the difference working with Tom Werman was, you know, we had a budget, so we had more time. We had more pre-production. It wasn't so rushed. Um, Tom really liked to get involved, not in the writing process, but he liked to uh, get involved in the arrangement. He, be he believed arrangement was important, and it is important. That was probably the biggest takeaway for me, was learning how he thought about arranging songs. When we went in there, I think our songs were too long or things were in the wrong place or whatever like that, and, and Tom really helped with that stuff. In terms of just, you know, working with Tom over Rick Browdy, it's not, it was, you know, they're just two different kinds of approaches. I enjoyed the process with Tom Worman more, but and with all due respect, you know, Rick Browdy got us, you know, to, to get that record done in nine days, which was hard at that time. Everything was analog tape. Tom really understood what our band wanted to do. He worked in that genre all the time, so a good situation for us. So the only two songs that I can remember that we left off was uh, Gotta Face the Hangman and Living for the Minute. We probably had a bunch more songs in pre-production, but we narrowed it down and those two were recorded that I just mentioned, but they weren't included on the record. That's all I remember. I don't remember being any more than the two of those that we did. <laughs> Wendy, I am so sorry I ran your roll aids over. Um, wow. <laughs> you know, encounters with fans are always, I, I don't mind encounters with fans. The only time I don't like it is like when I first wake up in the morning and I look like butt. I just look like total fuck. Or I'm like with my kids or dinner or something like that. Just walking around, I, lo I love to say hi to people. I love our fans, so. <laughs> Chances of Poison doing just an open up and say all oh, tour, uh, I'd love it. I think it'd be cool. I think we should every year for a while go to Vegas and do just one album at a time, top to bottom. Not so sure that'll happen, but that would be really, really cool. I'd love to play Turn Down the Walls live. Yeah, I'm totally all for that. That would be a great idea. Man, I totally remember all those shows, especially like Oscars, because that was a chance for us to go 
do the set that we used to do in Pennsylvania, which was our cover songs, just make money doing cover songs, and then we go do our original stuff in Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, I like playing the big places, I gotta be honest with you. I think that what we do translates to a large audience really well, and I think we're good at that. We were really good, though, in small places, too. It'd be really neat to try to figure out how to meld those two together. We hit everybody with silly string at the end of the night and stuff like that. How are you gonna do that in arena? We'd have to send out, like, maybe 30 bikini-clad girls with silly string. That's an idea if you like it. Okay, so Andy was asking me about From the Saddle set of it's very nice and I appreciate you saying that. Yes, From the Saddle for all of you, so you know, was a project that I decided I was going to take my Leica camera and just go ride around on a motorcycle all over the country and do photos that, you know, just from the seat of the motorcycle. I was not allowed to get off the bike. That was the rules that I created. Because sometimes if you create rules, it makes you think a different way. So I've done a ton, but I still haven't got a, a big enough body of work yet. And when I do, I am going to show it. And thank you for saying nice things to me. And you're very nice too. I'm your poison, now you drink a cup. Before we were signed, was there a bidding war? No. We got turned down by every label at least twice. We were signed finally to Enigma, which was an independent label. They were a label that were willing to take chances, and nobody else was. We did so well on that label that Capital got excited and got involved. So that's that story. <laughs> describe the recording process of the record? Pause, record. Pause, record. And it's all because your mama don't dance and your daddy don't rock and roll. Your mama don't they say sometimes it takes you a whole life to write your first album and two months to write your second one. I don't think that was true with us. We had a lot of ideas for the second album a long time before that. Those songs hadn't evolved to the point where we were ready to do it. Tom Worman may have seen the value in some of those songs. The day that I realized Poison had made it was when I heard Every Rose set to elevator music. I went, we've arrived. Fallen Angel was based on so many girls that we saw come to Los Angeles who were really good kids that uh, got wrapped up in trying to find fame and fortune, and it happens now. It'll probably forever happen. It happens in New York or any of the big cities. We saw some, uh, some really good people uh, go downhill quickly. The funniest thing that ever happened on doing a video was me falling off the back of the riser doing Talk Dirty to Me. That was not planned and somehow I didn't get hurt and everybody came running over and said, are you okay, are you okay? And, and I go, yeah, yeah, I think I'm okay. They go, do you mind if we use that? The recording process for Open Up and Say All took a few weeks. It wasn't crazy. Mixing took about a week. We came up with the name because we kind of love these common colloquialisms and uh, the plays on words and stuff like that. Poison, Open Up and Say Ah, you know, that kind of thing. Kind of fun, you know. The thing that helped me a lot when recording not only that album, but every album, there was a drummer by the name of Nathan Neblett, who was the drummer for Aretha Franklin, and he heard me rehearsing to a click one day, and he said, man, you're listening to it all wrong. And he spent about 45 minutes with me, teaching me how to listen to the click and work with the click. And of course, you have to play to a metronome or a click on records. You want it to be consistent. That was important on that record because the engineer and the producer, Tom Worman, were very picky about tempo and meter. And so that helped me a lot. <sighs> Two things. I think uh, bad to be good because we did a lot of percussion. We were trying to create this cool intro.
The other one was was every rose because I programmed the drums and then the guitar went down over that and then I went back in and played the drums, uh, got rid of the uh, programmed drums and played to it. We probably replaced the guitar after that anyway, so the recording process is weird. Something you never know what's going to work. You know, we were really upset about that tongue getting, you know, that censored out. The truth be told, it was Walmart. They were very, very conservative, but at the same time, they were 60, 70 percent. 60 or 70 percent of our records were sold through Walmart, believe it or not. We had to decide, hey, are we in the album cover business or are we in the music business? We're here to sell music, and thank God we made that decision because uh, it was our biggest selling record. People are downloading now anyway. Uh, so that the album cover, like today, really doesn't mean anything compared to what it did then. It wasn't demonic, it was just this shocking, cool cover. And say, oh, I mean, it was funny, you know, this huge tongue on there, you know. Our spin on the Rolling Stones tongue, but just, like, more aggressive. I don't even remember what was going through our heads. I just remember that Bobby Dahl and I sat there and broke pieces of Niels Lozauer, the photographer's broom off, and stuck it in Bambi's hair. And... <laughs> <laughs> she was like picking all this like broom pieces of broom out of her hair you know so <laughs> um, nothing really I actually enjoy touring now more you know maybe maybe the newness of, of discovering all those places but it's been replaced with familiar hour. Uh, familiar, familiar hour. Uh, uh, I'm gonna spell that. It's been nice to go into a town and you know people, and almost every town we go into, I know somebody. So uh, we've built this like family, global family. That's why on my Instagram, I think I say I'm, I'm a global citizen. I really. I really feel like that. It's it's really nice to go into almost any place and know somebody. I don't know. I never set out to like particularly record anything different than just how I play. I don't play really boxy or square like a lot of drummers were in the 80s. They always wanted me just to to hit hard and they won this huge room sound and I have a little bit more of a swing to the way I play but I was just being me and playing the way I knew how to play uh, so there wasn't a lot of forethought and the band were used to the way I played so I mean it's just how we've worked together and that's what we've always done so guys we're getting ready to go on the stage this is uh, I just want to show you just how glamorous these dressing rooms are, okay? This is my wardrobe case. This is my catering. There are my drinks and a little spot to warm up. My sticks. Coffee, of course. And that's really it. I got a bathroom over there. Not as crazy as you'd think it is, huh? Uh, but I do have a bus, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, we're getting ready to go on. And uh, show number one. Here we go.